See this right here? This is the key to understanding what the best cartridge is between the 280 Remington, 280 Ackley Improved, 7 SOM, and the 7 WSM. We're not talking about the 7 Rem Mag in this video, even though we will make some references to it, because this is an episode of Cartridge Wars, and we're looking at this part of the bracket. Today, we're gonna discover the most ballistically perfect seven millimeter cartridge. Let's go. If we look at the max case capacity for each of these four cartridges, and we say 280 Remington is the lowest, this is how much more powder you can put on a 280 Ackley Improved. That's it. Just those few granules right there. Then, let's look at the short versions, right? The 7 SOM and the 7 WSM. In the last episode of Cartridge Wars, you guys did something very interesting that kind of surprised me. Well, let's go back to the first episode of the brackets. We had the 300 WSM versus the 30-06. And by a margin of 7%, you guys voted for the 300 WSM to beat the 30-06 and continue in the competition. Essentially, that was a competition between, you know, a more ballistically perfect uh, cartridge versus the more standby, well-known, uh, tried and true, long-lasting 30-06. And then we had the next one. And essentially the competition was between the 6.8 Western and the 270. Really, it's the same kind of debate, right? It's the new ballistically perfect cartridge versus the standby, right? But this time you favored the standby. This time the 270 won. Today, we're looking at something kind of similar. We're looking at the 7 SOM versus the 280 AI. Now, I don't mean to jump to, to conclusions and say it's just those two in this competition. We're gonna look at all four of these, but I think by the end of this, you'll see that really it's those two that are probably your best bets. But let's take them piece by piece. First, the 280 Remington. This cartridge was released way back in 1957, and it's still very popular today. Rifles are still being chambered into 280 Remington. It's been an incredible cartridge. And when it was released, it really stomped out a lot of competition that was there before it. But almost at this, as soon as it was released, P.O. Ackley, who uh, was a fellow Uton, Ackleyized this cartridge. So what he did is he basically took the 280 Remington and he sharpened the shoulder to a 40 degree shoulder and he just blew out the case taper just a little bit. That's it. It's just a very small change to the 280 Remington. Now P.O. Ackley made these types of changes to, I mean, dozens of different cartridges that he Ackleyized uh, to, and it is a cool improvement. But sometimes I think we get such nostalgia for uh, ballistic history and things that sometimes we kind of forget what really happened. And so look at the difference between a 280 Remington and a 280 AI. That's how much more powder you can put in a 280 AI compared to a 280 Remington. It's really a very subtle change. But the sharper shoulder also gives a very positive head space. So the cartridge stops at the right point and we get a consistent spot there um, that can help with accuracy. And that's, that's really what we did with the 280 AI. Now here's the interesting thing. Although it was acclimatized in 1957 and it was a popular wildcat for many, many years, it wasn't until 2008 that Nosler actually samified this cartridge, that it was actually codified with uh, SAMI specs. And really it's been since 2008 that the 280 AI has suddenly far outpaced the 280 Remington. And now it's quite a bit more popular than the 280 Remington. If I look at the most popular bolt action cartridges ranked from one to 84, the 280 Remington, let me get my numbers straight here, would be number 53, but the 280 Ackley Improved would be number 37. And the 280 Ackley Improved now enjoys quite a bit of support from the different ammo manufacturers and rifle manufacturers. There really is pretty good support for it. If I were buying one today, I'd buy the 280, 280 Ackley Improved. 
honestly, that's not to say that it's like some kind of ballistic, uh, amazing change from a 280 Remington. It's a small change, but it is much more popular today. And so I think the 280 AI really needs to be our choice from this side of the bracket. But now, let's go into the other side. The 7 SOM versus the 7 WSM. Between these two cartridges, I think the one we need to be looking at is the 7 SOM. Now, I realize that some of you may never have even heard of this, but maybe if you've been around a little bit of competition shooting or you have a little bit of ballistics knowledge, I know a lot of you, when we started Cartridge Wars, your mind immediately went to the 7 SOM. When we said we're looking for something that we can hunt up to and including elk that you could also shoot a competition with, reasonably light recoil but nice power and reasonably flat shooting, I know I heard from several of you it's the 7 SOM, and I don't know if I would disagree. Let me tell you the difference between the 7 SOM and the 7 WSM first, because I think we can kick out the 7 WSM pretty quickly from this. The reason is, the 7 SOM, it does have less case capacity than the WSM. The WSM more matches the 7 rim mag. The 7 SOM is a little bit less than that, but it also has a longer neck and it's a shorter overall case. And so it's going to help for using these longer bullets, which frankly, we don't have a lot of in the 7 millimeters. But also, the 7 WSM, it came out right before the 7 SOM and kind of stole its thunder. But the 7 WSM has died out. I mean, it's dead. Uh, it's hard to get brass for it. There is a tiny, tiny amount of ammunition you can still buy factory for 7 WSM. There's just not much more there. And the 7 SOM, it's growing in popularity while the WSM is continuing to peter out. And so... I think we should be looking at two cartridges here, the 280 Ackley Improved and the 7 SOM. But I know a lot of you aren't familiar with the 7 SOM, so let's talk about it. So this is a short action case. It's very comparable to the 280 Ackley Improved, but it gives you just a tiny bit more powder capacity. Interestingly, if you look at competition rifles, a ton of 7 SOM is out there for F-Class and for ELR. It's interesting because the 7 SOM just fits in such a nice ballistic spot where a lot of the 300 Magnums just gives too much recoil for a lot of competition shooting. And then you go down to that 7, you're getting really high BC bullets available and we can shoot them out pretty fast with a nice balance of recoil because we just need less powder right? because we're shooting a lighter bullet, the 7 SOM actually is extremely common for custom rifles, both in competition and in hunting. So you know, I know what you're saying. How come I've never seen this at my local store? Well, for whatever reason, it isn't getting a lot of factory support. But custom rifle makers, especially the higher end custom rifle makers dealing with the real serious hunters, they hear 7 SOM all day long. It's extremely common, maybe the most common chambering for a custom rifle right now, maybe except for the 6.5 PRC. So if you're going to buy, buy a 7 SOM, you have to be a hand loader. But really for me, what I would do if I'm, buy, if I'm building a 7 SOM, just go buy 400 pieces of brass and you're done. That's it. All you're going to need is primer powder bullet after that forever. You can just keep reloading that same brass. I mean, you could shoot thousands of rounds. If you have 400, let's say we get eight, 10, 10 firings off of those pieces of brass before we've got to do some uh, major fixes to, the, to things. Like that's a ton of shooting. You're going to burn your barrel out before you're going to be done with that brass. And so it's really, to me, not a big deal if, we've, if we're using a cartridge that doesn't have factory support because I'm going to hand load it anyway. It's going to be way cheaper and I can get it the way I want with the bullet that I want for my rifle. So if you're that guy, if you uh, are in the camp of, you know, I'm going to reload anyway and I really want the perfect rifle and the perfect setup for the perfect cartridge, then 7 SOM is an amazing way to go. If you just really, really, really want factory rifles, factory support, then 280 Ackley Improved is really the only choice here. 
But let's talk about some of the differences if you are building a rifle between these two. The 280 Ackley Improved gets a point because you have more magazine capacity. You can usually fit, you know, four or five in the mag with the 280 Ackley Improved. With a 7 SOM, you're probably only going to get three. The 7 SOM, because it's a short action and still very efficient, can get away with about 1.25 inches shorter barrel than the 280 Ackley Improved and get the same results. So that's a big bonus, especially in a world where we're shooting suppressors more and more. Also, because it's a short action, we're saving about 0.35 pounds on the overall rifle going with the 7 SOM compared to the 280 Ackley. Now, some of you are saying, okay, those are some practical differences, but what about the ballistics between these? Well, they're gonna shoot the exact same 284 caliber bullet. It's gonna be the exact same bullet you can put in either one of these cartridges. It's just a matter of which container do you want your put to put your powder in. We see a slight increase in capacity for the 7 SOM. And really, if we're looking at a 162 grain ELDX, we're looking about the maximums according to Hornady uh, for velocity. Here are the velocities. Um, I mean, it's not a giant jump between any of, any of these four cartridges. The biggest jump is up to the WSM, but it's really faded a lot. Um, and to get that last little bit of velocity, we really lose a lot of efficiency. We're increasing the recoil more than just the higher velocity, right? Okay, so if you think about how much the rifle is gonna hit your shoulder, there are really two factors. Um, it's the speed of the projectile and the weight of the projectile. Now, part of the projectile is also the ejecta, the bullet powder that's you know shooting out of the of the end of the barrel, right? It's like if somebody's standing on you and suddenly they jump, how they've got to push off, right? Um, if they're heavier and if they jump faster, it's going to hurt more. That's really all we're looking at. So when we go to the WSM, because it's less efficient and we're adding more powder to get less of a, of a jump in speed, it's also at an increased rate increasing the recoil, if that makes any sense. I guess what I'm really saying is you really get to a point of diminishing returns right after the 7 SOM. The 7 SOM 280 Ackley Improved, these are incredibly efficient cartridges. So the fate of Cartridge Wars is in your hands. Do you pick the 280 Ackley Improved that gives you, you know, factory support, also gives you a couple more capacity in the magazine, or do you go with the 7 SOM that, at least in my mind, mwah, it is ballistic perfection. I mean, it's going out in so many custom rifles right now. It's winning ELR and F-class competitions all the time. Um, it's that short action. It's gonna save you a little bit of length on the barrel, a little bit of weight on the, on the action. It's incredibly efficient, gives you a little bit more case capacity than the 280 Ackley Improved though, but you're gonna be reloading all your own and we've gotta go with a custom rifle. These are our two options. So that's what you're voting with on Cartridge Wars, but I also should say that I think this whole conversation is probably gonna be moot within the next two years. Here's why. If we get a seven Western or a seven PRC, that I'm almost, I can almost guarantee we're going to see that in the next year or two. Maybe, maybe in the next month at SHOT Show, who knows, right? If we were to see a seven, you know, a modern seven that's, you know, getting support from the manufacturers, I think it's going to dominate. I, I think it would dominate. I think it's a major underserved area in the market. And here's why. When you look at the seven rim mag, you're pretty much going up to 162 grains on your bullet weight. Sometimes you'll find something heavier. I mean, Berger does make a one, does it make a 190? Is it 190? There's a 180. I think there's a 190 that Berger's doing in a seven millimeter. There are, there's a ELD Max that I think is a 180. Um, there are heavier bullets, but in the actual factory loads, nobody's loading them in factory ammunition. Those are just for the hand loaders. And the reason is all of these cartridges are using a one in 10 twist. And that's not enough to stabilize those heavier, longer bullets. 
And so I think these are amazing cartridges. However, I also think seven millimeter is gonna get overhauled as soon as somebody puts a one and eight, one and seven and a half twist on a new uh, short action cartridge that essentially is gonna be like a seven SOM. But I think it'll probably get a lot of attention and maybe take off anyway. And I look forward to it because, boy, that's needed. I think it might be the perfect cartridge. We'll see if it ever happens, but that's really what I'm looking for. So your vote, 280 Acclimate Improved versus 7SOM. See you guys.